Sam. I know you don't like Fords, man, but I've got something. I've got to show you 347. Remember, I stripped one down and done fast forward to the example of stripping an engine down. A filthy, dirty Windsor. But I'm going to show you the, the parts. Now, these parts is what we're going to use to make it into 347. So, I'm going to use a scat crank. I've already balanced this. A scat flywheel and a scat harmony balancer. All matching in that. But the, the beauty of the balancer, now this is going to go in a Mustang. The beauty of the balancer, how many people know this, but it's a multi fit one. You put three bolts, or you run the four bolt, and you can pull this off. I'm not going to do it. And you can run the inner or outer for the chef, or you flip it around and run different pulleys on it. Brilliant idea. 28 ounce. Nice crankshaft. Now, obviously, you're going to use a Phil Pro gasket set. Always. <laughs> uh, a water pump. I'll show you the other products. And we get this off um, the supplier that we've got. I'm going to use a Mellings oil pump. Mellings oil pump drive. Oh, sorry, ARP one, this one. One piece spear main seal. Roller lifters. Yseco. They call them. Clips. A scat rod. Now the rings here. You see this extra oil ring? Very nice that. Mm. Now I'll show you what this does. Now we're going to use um, normal main bearings. A finishing kit. The finishing kit is the head dowels, the block. Tommy cover dowels. There the head dowels there. Camshaft bolt. the retaining plate and the thrust plate bolts the tailor time cover bolt a new keyway for the crank and a pin for the camshaft that's called a finishing kit you gonna use wash plugs cam plug cloyd's timey chain kit brand new timey cover a beautiful piston street smart remember i talked about the pistons we're using a street smart piston a 4g but because of the stroke, 347, see the gudgeon pin is further into the oil ring. See that? And I'm going to fit a piston on and show you how we put the rings and that on it, just to show you. Um, and a heavy duty Conrad bearing. I'll grab a piston. Let me lube it up. You actually got to physically put the piston on because I know how they go it goes like that and uh, chamfer that way so that's the front it's going to go like that put it on get ourselves a spiral lock they're called very hard to put in man they have got a tool for them. I've seen a tool. Some blokes made a tool for putting them in and that, but you've got to buy it for every piston you make. Here we go. Bit of stuffing around. I'm going to wind it through. I think we did this with a small block shift, didn't we? We did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same clips. Bang, that's in. Flip it over. Some people give up and they put, um, they go buy e clips, you know, those um, standard clips. Standard clips in them, and that, you know, but um, they don't give up easy. You just keep going, you try your best, you know. That's in too. Okay. Now, this, I think I showed you last time on this. So we've got the dot there. And Dimple, okay. I don't know, can you, can you see it? Yeah, it's yeah, coming uh, that, that's sort of um, sort of it's got kind of like a a depression that sticks out. Very hard. So anyway, yeah. doesn't matter. I'm going to give it a go anyway. So what you do, that goes this way, facing down. So that dip, and it's going to go towards the gudgeon hole. You wind it across.
like that. Remember the clips? These? That's up towards the top. People say, oh, you don't have to, but it's actually written in instructions. Some of them, they throw them in, the instructions, some of them, they don't. This. So we've got one gap there. The other one, we're going to put it here, the top. That's in there. The other one. To there. So. So you stagger. So that's our, that's our oil ring. Caps. Our oil ring to go on, you know. I'm going to let this go. We're not going to put the top of the rings in because they're going to be gapped. We're going to actually, um, we're going to actually machine the block. I haven't machined it yet. I know the size we're going to do, so. I've already worked it out. And on the rings instructions here. There you go. There's a picture of the. Remember I said to you, facing up. It's actually written here, just to show people what it means, you know. And here it shows you we're gonna have to machine the ring gaps, and it's just telling you not to do it like that. Now here we've got instructions here. It says straight, naturally aspirated. It says 0.0045 is your minimum clearance per inch. So you're gonna times that. It's a four inch, 30 thou ball. So we're gonna work it out with mathematics. It's around about 18, 19 thou. But we're gonna give it more than that because that's your minimum clearance on it. That's your second ring gap on it. So it's only five thou. Anyway, we'll go up to the block. I'm gonna grab that. What we're doing now is pouring the engine out to 30 thou over. But when we bore them out, I set the tool bit up a bit smaller than the bore that I wanna do. So we can finish it off by honing it, but this, these are called cap bores, There's three of them. What, they, what they're designed to do is to line up the bore. So I'll put it like that, I'll give an example, put a crook in, so they, they pop out, they line the block, then they clamp it, up it goes, whoop, it just broke it. So I'll go down, there. Hit it, and it starts to bore, bore the engine out. Now I'm going to give it another little cut. That's a finished spot. That's me finishing the boring on that cylinder. And that is just what it looks like before I bore it. What I'm doing here now is putting a chamfer on top of the top of the block. The idea of the chamfer is it does two jobs. Makes it easier for me to put the rings in and stops pre-ignition. You've got a sharp corner. What happens, it can glow in the chamber or it'll actually pre-fire. Pre so we'll take that sharp edge by putting a 45 degree chamfer. here now. Okay, next step we've got is we're going to take a light cut off the surface on it to make a, a nice area for the gasket to seal. Especially this block here, it's got a bit of a twist in it I've noticed. I'm going to get it flat. Anyway, so I've done my best to line it up with a crank. Where the crank's bolted up, you can see there. That's the uh, the centre of the block. Try to get it as dead level as we can. Right. The next job, next step after this is honing it. I'm not gonna 
video today because you've seen it before, it's pretty boring. So I'll clean it up, I'll get it ready for assembly, and that'll be the next step to show you step by step assembly. I have to relieve this block as well underneath because it is a stroker engine. I'm going to cut a bit of the ball and I'll get that ready for you to show you where to cut and show you how to do it. I'll leave it at that. I want to say thank you to the guys that supply us all the engine parts and that. We've got a, a lot of manufacturers, companies that help us out with all the parts and that. And they're good quality parts. If you need engine parts, make sure you buy good quality parts. Do not buy the Chinese rubbish. Dead set.